My name is Kenny Scharf. I was born in Hollywood, California in 1958. And I grew up in the San Fernando Valley, the original American suburb. Very American, middle class, typical American, boring environment. <laughs> Every Saturday morning was when I was allowed to watch TV. So Saturday mornings were the cartoon time. So I would pretty much wake up and watch cartoons until my mom said, okay, now time to go outside. <laughs> um, I was about the age of let me see, about seven, we got our first color TV. I remember the big day. Uh, and I was fascinated uh, with sitting this close to the screen. I wasn't watching the show. I was watching the psychedelic lights and movement of colors. And in the early days of color TV, if you stare really close, it would be a kind of a black surface with lots of colored dots. And uh, when my mother wasn't paying attention, I would stare that close and then she'd say, you're too close, get away. And so I would go, you know, and watch. But I really remember being fascinated with all of the imagery of just colors, basically, and, and dots. And then I, early on, became really into these two cartoons, which was the Flintstones and the Jetsons. They're really about the kind of environment uh, that I grew in, which is like a typical American suburban lifestyle. One was set in the past and one was set in the future. And I just responded to the idea of the past and the future and how it related to the present day lifestyle. And then I didn't really have any access to art other than what I would see uh, sometimes on these vans, these surfer vans that would drive. They'd have paintings, airbrush paintings of, you know, like beach scenes and girls and that thing. And I used to go to ride my bike to these places they called head shops. Head shops back in the 60s were these kind of uh, kind of like hippie stores where they would sell um, smoking paraphernalia and they had a lot of posters. So they had a whole rack of posters that I would flip through and they had um, mostly psychedelic posters uh, the fuzzy with black light, and they also would have Dali, they would have Magritte, they would have De Chirico, and the, some surrealists made it into the psychedelic poster shops. So I remember being taken with those. So that was really my only access, and my parents saw. Uh, my mom more, that I was really painting every day and pay, spent a lot of time on the floor with paints and drawings. And so they said, um, 
we're gonna take, you wanna go to see some art. So it was a very important day. We went to um, the Huntington Library and there was Blue Boy, Gainsboro, and on the other side of the wall was famous Pinky by Lawrence. And I'm not sure I actually cared so much or loved the painting so much, but I loved the experience that um, they thought it was important for me to see art and they recognized that art was what I loved. The thought of being an artist as your career was not really something anyone considered viable. So I thought, oh, how do I, how do I make a living? What do I do? So I said, oh, I'll be a commercial artist. And at the time, um, one of my aspirations, and actually many teenagers, was doing album covers. Album covers were really the, the ultimate way to get your art seen at the time. I, I knew in LA, you know, there was an art scene, but I had no access or understanding that it even existed. Uh, so I went to college in the beginning, uh, 1976, uh, UC Santa Barbara, California school system. And I had a, I took art history class. And that's when I started to learn about art history, going through uh, 20th century art, learning the different movements, you know, surrealism, abstract expressionism. I was fascinated. And then came the time into pop art and talking about Warhol, and the factory, and I had this idea, I'm moving to New York, because it really excited me to see the whole Warhol world, that art wasn't only this solitary person with a beret and an easel doing this, it was like dancing and parties and films, and I was like, I'm, I'm going to New York. So I applied to probably 20 different art schools um, and I didn't get accepted to any of them except one, which was the School of Visual Arts. And I learned after I arrived that it wasn't very hard to get in, <laughs> but that was okay. And the first couple days was disappointment because I looked around at the students, and before I moved to New York, my idea was everyone's gonna be incredible, and, and art school is gonna be like, all the students are gonna be just amazing. And I look around and I'm like, ah, oh, these kids look pretty much the same as the kids in, in the valley, suburban kids. And it's, I, I was a little bit like, I came all the way here and like, where are the, the artists that I'm looking for? And I, not too long afterwards, first I met uh, Jean. I walked into the school cafeteria. Cafeteria was like a hangout. People would hang out in there. I walked in there and immediately there's Jean. I was like 19 and he was 17. He wasn't a student, but he would hang out in the cafeteria because that's where the artist kids. 
and he looked at me and he said, can I see what's in your, because I was holding my school, you know, portfolio. Can I see what's in there? And I said, okay. And I showed him this painting and he looked at me and he said, you're going to be famous. And I was like, what? I just thought that was so strange. Like, fame? Like, it, it, he was very focused on it. So I was like, wow. Oh. And then he was very, you know, intense in these eyes. And I immediately realized, that, okay, so this is one of these kind of people that I wanted to meet in my imagination before I moved to New York. So we quickly started hanging out and, um, you know, I really knew nothing about urban life because California and the suburbs and it's not New York City, especially then. And so we walk around the streets. I discovered he was living only a block from me in Chelsea. And we walk around the streets, and he had the marker, and he would write, same-o. And then he gave me the pen. <clears throat> I'm like, oh, okay, what do I do? And then so I, like, I would do a TV set, and inside I'd write, the Jetsons. And we walked around, and uh, probably around the same time, um, I was wandering, and I heard some Devo music. And I was like, oh. Where's that coming from? And I followed the music and I saw there was a door open and I looked and there was Keith Haring uh, in a room by himself with the music and he had covered the ceiling and the walls and the floor with these, he was painting to the music, each beat was like a line. Like, and I just watched him and then he painted himself into the corner and he was standing in the corner with the only part where his feet were was not painted. And then he looked up at me and I don't know why, we immediate, I immediately like, and we became very close, really good friends. And then I introduced him to Jean and so it happened very quickly. And not long after that, I think Keith realized that there was a lot more education and excitement in the street and in the city than at school. So he left and I actually stopped attending school as well because the city was just way too exciting um, with everything going on with art and, and the music scene and party and everything. And, and I just felt I was much more important to be in the street than at school. So very early I, kind of found my, my little group. One of the things that really um, hit me about the art at the time that was being celebrated was I felt it was just elitism. Uh, if you didn't study art, it was almost like people really liked uh, celebrated things that they only three people could understand. So if no one understands it, oh, it must be very important. And I really didn't like, it was very alienating. Like, even for me, who was an art student, and I, I study and understand what it is about, uh, I still could see very clearly how it had no relation to life. Or, you know, if someone in the street walks by, 
you know, a white cube, they, they wouldn't even notice it. And I'm like, why would you want no one to notice or care? I, I'm not against art education and I'm not against people, uh, art lovers and art enthusiasts who know everything about art, but it doesn't mean you have to exclude everyone. And the, the, um, the, the idea at the time that was very prevalent was that if you did things that everyone could relate to, then it was kind of dumb. And I didn't understand that. Instead of, they, they, I, they thought like, oh, if you do stuff, you know, like make t-shirts or things accessible, you were selling out and you were dumbing it down for the masses. But I was like, no. Why can't we elevate the masses? Why do you think that anyone in the street is not intelligent enough to... How many levels, like, what excites me is having something that can exist on many levels. Like, music. Everyone can hear the same song and some people can, you know, relate to it in one way and then others in another way. They're, why not give something for everyone? So this is something that, you know, I still believe in. Uh, I, want, I want everyone to be included if they want to be. And that was one of the main reasons why Keith opened the pop shop and why I off offer things for sale. You know, you could buy a t-shirt and you could feel a part and get inspiration or ideas or just enjoy. Or you could, you know, also buy a painting, you know, that's also good. That doesn't have to be only one or the other. So I titled the show Tooth Sweet um, right now. Uh, I titled it actually, the last thing I did in the show was the, the round spray paintings. So right now, you know, like those are very immediate. So, and then those paintings in there with all the drips, uh, they have to do with right now, which is unfortunately, uh, you know, the earth uh, is heating up and we are melting and yet we're still living our lives uh, as we should. Uh, we're still enjoying our lives. We're not supposed to stop, but I, 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 it's a very confusing thing to me. It's like, I feel we're in an emergency. It's so urgent. And I don't understand why people, not everyone feels the same. It's like, I, I just don't understand. It's like, we don't have any time. We're wasting time. Why are we still on the same? We're still, you know, I, it's unfathomable to me. So these are things that I think about all the time. It's on my mind, you know, it's, and it's always been my theme, but now, so growing up in my childhood, this theme, it felt urgent, but it wasn't an emergency. I felt then that, oh, in the future, we'll figure it out. Well, it really pains me that all the predictions that we all knew, now they're happening right before our eyes, yet we're still contributing to it. And so, you know, here we are in 2023, the hottest year on globe by far. What about next year? What about the year after that? It's not gonna get better. So 
I feel this dire emergency situation, yet I'm still painting, loving art, painting things. So I really feel that this is the state of all of us. We all share this. And um, God, I, I just, I don't know what else to do besides express it my own way and try to live my life uh, without using plastic. I'm, try, I, I'm here, I came here on a plane, but I really don't want to go on airplanes. I only, when I feel it's really important, I will travel. But honestly, I, I feel like everyone should just stay home. I really do. I feel like I have this idea that why can't we all get together and say, okay, every Sunday, no one flies. Is it that hard for, uh, just stop. Can you imagine if the whole world decided we're not going to fly on Sundays, what the impact would be? It seems like we need to do this. Just start somewhere. We have to do something. Everyone has to do something. And I, I get very frustrated. And uh, it's on my mind all the time. I have grandchildren. Uh, I, I look at them. I look at all the children in the street, anywhere I go. And I, I can't help but think, what world are you inheriting? It's, a, it's just... I can't help, it's just on my mind. I don't really want to um, knock you over the head with my message. I want, like, I also want to celebrate color and love and beauty and emotions and all those things. So I really want to include the things that I love and that I love to do and share that with everyone. And so I mentioned before how art that I, I respond to and art that I want to make is art that can exist on many different levels. So if a viewer wants to just look at something and just react and feel excited by uh, colors and forms and let their imagination have a good time, enjoy, because we need to enjoy. We have to enjoy everything. Even while this ship is sinking, let's have a party, you know? So. But then, I think that's fine. You can take that and that's all you take, and that's fine. But there's more than that. And if you choose, you can look further and find different meanings and subjects that are really not so fun uh, really pressing and urgent and frightening. So I include that as well, if you want to see it. But I don't force you to see it. I don't want to force anyone. Uh, I don't want to be a dogmatic person who is like, you know, you must this. You, I don't want to tell anybody how they have to feel. I want to let them find them themselves.